It's been a while since I reviewed a board like this. Something with design inspiration rooted in something really interesting, a font. Universe was designed by Adrian Frutiger and released in 1957. It was one of the first fonts that pushed the notion of typefaces being part of a family of varying but similar weights and styles. It's likened to one of its extremely popular sister fonts, Helvetica, released at the same time and bearing prominence in branding throughout some of the world's most popular companies. But Universe remained pretty ambiguous. Until now, this board marks the entry of typeface into the custom keyboard market, bringing the essence of the Universe family to the very tool that allows us to experience it. My packaging is a very early prototype, so the final retail units might have differences. And I do have to say that it's quite beautiful. It has some elements of typical throwaway packaging, but also this really nice carrying handle. Immediately on the inside is an empty box, which I assume will be for accessories that come with the final retail board. Under it is tadpoles, screws, bottom feet, and a wooden accent. This wooden accent has a free engraving option, but mine is unfortunately blank. In here is also a really red aluminum plate, and an FR4 full plate that can be converted to a half plate. The section under this has our data board, solder PCB, which has a really unique top pattern, and the board itself. This has a decent amount of protection. The Universe is a tadpole mounted 70% keyboard. 70% refers to a few different layouts. For one, there's the Xbox 70 I reviewed a while back with a nav cluster and no function row. The Universe is the opposite. It has a function row and no nav cluster. We have both hot swap and solder PCBs, both being 1.6mm. Hot swap supports stepped caps and split backspace, and solder additionally supports split left shift and ISO enter. These both have daughter boards and utilize VIA. For plates, we have only aluminum and FR4, which can be converted into a half plate. For colors, we have anodized black, silver, and Prussian blue. Lastly, the universe will run for around $245 for the solder kit and $255 for the hot swap kit. In the PCB are TX stabilizers looped with 205 grade 0 and BDZ, a lad on the aluminum plate, and for switches today we're going to use stock Cherry MX2A Browns. These are looped from the factory with something similar to 205 grade 0, so let's see if they stack up to manually tune Browns in terms of sound and feel. Of course, since this board is soldered, we're going to go ahead and get these switches soldered in. After soldering, we can install the tadpoles onto the PCB, and that concludes the inner assembly. Let's move on to the case. I'll connect the daughter board, which is the kind that pushes inward making things a bit easier, and install the inner assembly. We can close up the top case, screw the board together, and lastly, I'm going to install GMK Striker. Let's take a listen. So the sound profile is great. It's the pretty typical gentle and high-pitched sound of Tune Browns, which means that the stock MX2As perform decently. I thought this would be a good pairing with the aluminum plate and tadpoles, and surely enough, it's pretty solid. A theory I have is that getting rid of the tadpoles closest to the spacebar might help give the spacebar sound a bit more life. Unfortunately, the board still does have a decent bit of hollowness, which I'm sure can be mostly fixed with a force break mod, but is a little bit annoying nonetheless. It's not audible with the dust mat, but definitely is if I pick the board up, and probably will be if you use ladder switches. I wish I could test some more configurations, but because of the solder PCB, we're locked to this one, and foams aren't included to help modify the sound beyond this. Although, due to the available plate selection only really having this cut, and the PCBs not having any, most high-pitched configs should sound pretty good. The feel is very neutral, leaning towards the stiff end as I use the aluminum plate. Tadpole mount also isn't a very forgiving mount to begin with, so don't expect this board to have noticeable flexor bounds. These tadpoles are 60A, which is a decent middle ground stiffness. The way this board treats sound and feel customizability is a stark departure from the budget-oriented option overload atmosphere of the hobby today, which is obviously a preferential thing. With the universe, I'm reminded of boards that came out years ago, with a heavy focus on a high-quality sound signature and not customizability across many aspects. 
One cool aspect of the customizability of this board though, is the accent piece on top, bringing us to the design. You have the option between this copper waffle pattern or a wood one, which can have a custom engraving. On the top, we can see there's a slightly larger top and bottom bezel, and also a cherry lip that doesn't go past the arrow keys. The top edges have nice filleting, which helps make the board look more premium. I also like how you can see glimpses of the bright red aluminum plate from underneath, which helps create some nice contrast depending on the colors of your keycap set. The side profile is pretty simple, with a slight contour only on the left and right of the top case. Moving to the back, we can see this guild or score pattern on the bottom case, adding some visual flair. Also cool is the logo above the centered USB port, which is inlaid with some white paint that isn't very high quality, and the USB port itself which protrudes from the bottom case. On the very bottom is the universe wordmark engraved, making the entire exterior design fairly low key. On the inside is an internal weight, which helps with the high quality sound profile. So the design overall is definitely on the more minimal side, but still isn't without its flair. Besides the logo, material quality is great, with my silver anodization being nice and smooth. And at the end of the day, besides customizability, there are really no complaints for this board. I was told that there would be more options for the pre-order run, but this is what we have for the in-stock run for now. The board itself is surprisingly well-rounded, offering a good sound signature and a design that pretty closely matches the price point of $250. Although it's nothing flashy, neither is the design inspiration, so it ends up making sense, and the universe proves to be an interesting take on an interesting piece of design history.